is both sanctuary and emergency room. They completely transformed my life. This is highly politically charged, deeply emotionally vulnerable. You're not gonna be prepared for how much love and ferocity that everyone brings to this space. And it's cross-geographic, literally from the Caribbean to the United States to Europe to the African continent. Artists, rappers, poets, musicians, singers, adults, young people. This crazy experiment, the idea that that's still going on 20 years later is insane, right? It's nuts, right? Like BNB can no longer compete at BNB. It's 20 now. It's a weird thing. <laughs> this is an unadulterated and uncensored space to celebrate young people. 20 years ago, we had done the first Youth Speaks Teen Poetry Slam here in the Bay Area, and it was really great. And it turned out to be the first teen poetry slam for kids in the country. We filled a niche that didn't exist, but we also were really representing the future demographic. Everything was on the do-it-yourself tip. We started out with four teams. On a political front, you had Prop 21 newly politicizing young people. On a cultural front, you had a kind of like rebirth of hip-hop lyricism. We thought that the dominant narrative of the United States was bullshit. We thought that the way that young people were being represented in the media was bullshit. We thought that the way poetry and writing and performance was taught was bullshit. And we thought that there were real opportunities to give young people an opportunity to both write and tell their own story and create their own identity and break the very boxes of identity that was foisted upon them. It didn't just pop out of nowhere because we wanted to make an event. There was a need. The very first one, one of the young poets, Pico Eisen Martin, looked up and said, I can't believe how dope this is and we're kids. And that was like the moment where we all recognized that this could be something extraordinary. It kind of exponentially expanded. More people wanted to get involved, who were doing this kind of new work. Brave New Voices was this phenomenon that had started out here in the Bay, but it was affecting youth poetry communities in Chicago, where I'm from, New York City. And it's something I think that people really had to pay attention to. So you had all these different satellites around the country that were all coming together to nurture youth literacy, freedom of expression, and resistance. And all those things came together like a powder keg, man, and that was Brave New Voices. New Voices has been through a lot of iterations. What hasn't changed is resistance. The community of young people have taken over shows. A big protest happened in 2008 in D.C. It was the first year HBO was filming. And they were very interested in the competition element of the poetry slam. So I guess we have to do the honors of figuring out who wins. They're like, no, this is our space, and we're not gonna fake the way we feel about this space. This space is too sacred for us. We might as well do it the way they wanna do it. That's it. The youth have spoken. Fuck a region, fuck a city. Tonight, all we need is one mic. Give it up! Young people started to chant, which was super dope. You could see the stage kind of going up and down. So anytime you ever get it twisted, Brave New Voices is not about any one person getting their shine on. It's about a community of folks coming together. The next generation can clearly speak for itself. These young people come here and by the end of the week, they feel like the world is theirs. Oh, I really appreciate that they feel that they have the freedom in order to do that. That's the thing that hasn't changed over 20 years and I hope it never does. Annual Brave New Voices opening ceremony. Super excited to be here. We got 600 young people from across the world coming out to witness the very first event of 2017 Brave New Voices. Just bring all your energy because this will set the tone for the rest of the festival. Now the local ceremonies are being curated by kids who came to Brave New Voices and their first experience at Brave New Voices was an opening ceremony someone curated for them. They in my city. Full circle trajectory. This, this is why we go through the programs to become these adults. As I stand here, trying to put pen to paper to produce poem, trying to give voice to the most dormant feelings I have. I stand in a crowd and watch people become dust. 
Amazing. American flags become nooses, become something to push people back into the closet. You want this body so bad, but you don't want its breath. More people have a fear of stage fright than a fear of dying, meaning more people would rather be in the coffin than giving the eulogy. Child of brave softness, do you know we're going to live? Name yourself here, and here. You carry yourself in tender quiet like the poem you have always wanted to make. To be poet is to be phoenix. You gotta be reborn from the ashes after you set fire to the stage. As poets, we offer parts of ourselves that are broken in order to be made more whole. Well, you're here for more than just the poetry. You're here just to evolve. It's changed a lot throughout the years. Primarily, it's run by the younger staff who used to be Brave New Voices participants, and now they're in positions of leadership. I never would have thought I would be coming back year after year to facilitate space, but the only reason I feel empowered to do that was because I saw so many dope folks that first year. And we're all gonna be making space for the next generation to have not the same experience that we did, but an experience fully their own that they're going to run with and become part of this community. These young folks will go forth, and even if they don't continue to be poets, they will become the activists, they will become the healers, they will become um, the architects of their future. It's about how do you create legacy for others and that's become the central theme in the last five years at Brave New Voices. I think Brave New Voices is still just coming out of its infancy and it's just emerging into that space where it kind of knows what it's been and is looking now to figure out what it's going to be and that's a really exciting space. I hope that for generations and generations folks can come and know the love and excitement of BNB that I know me and my friends and my contemporaries have got to experience and I hope they make it completely new for themselves to and carry what lessons this holy space has with them as they make the world the shit. <laughs>